What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the values of A and C for a quadratic equation with a given number of solutions. Okay, so the instructions just say find a possible pair of integer values for A and C so that the quadratic equation has the given solutions. Then write the equation. Okay, so the equation that we're given right here is AX squared minus 8X plus C is equal to zero, and we have to have two real solutions, okay? So in order to set this up and solve it, we need to use the discriminant. And the formula for the discriminant is right here. It's equal to B squared minus 4AC. And this might look familiar because if you've seen the quadratic formula, this is just the part that's inside the big square root, okay? So we have three different ways we can set up and solve using the discriminant, okay? So if you have two real solutions, you can set the discriminant to be greater than zero. If you have one real solution, then you set D to equal zero. And if you have two imaginary solutions, then you set your discriminant to be less than zero. Here, we're given that we have to have two real solutions. So that means we're gonna use this very first rule right here, okay? So we're gonna say that our discriminant has to be bigger than zero in order to have two real solutions. Okay, so the discriminant, which is again, b squared minus 4ac has to be bigger than zero for this to be true. Okay, so let's just plug in what we know here. Uh, so we don't know a, we don't know c, but we do know b right here, right? This is b. So b is equal to negative eight. So let's plug in a negative eight for b right here. So we're gonna have uh, negative eight squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. So negative eight squared is equal to positive 64. So we're gonna get 64 minus four AC is greater than zero. Okay, and now to solve for A and C, let's move it to the other side of this inequality. So we're going to add uh, four AC to both sides, add four AC, right? So then those cancel out. So then on this side, we're just left with 64. And then our inequality sign points this way. And then we have four AC on this side, right? 4ac. Okay, and just to remind you, the only time you flip which way your inequality faces is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, right? We obviously didn't do that here. Okay, now to solve for a and c, let's get rid of this 4 by dividing both sides by 4, right? These cancel out. Uh, 64 divided by 4 is equal to 21, right? So then here we get that 21 is greater than ac, ac. Okay, and now this is the nice part. We can actually plug in whatever numbers we want for A and C to make this inequality true. Okay, so we just have to make sure that these two numbers, uh, A and C, when we multiply them together, that they really are smaller than or less than 21. Okay, so for example, you can just say that A is equal to one and C is equal to two, right? Because one times two is equal to two and two is obviously smaller than 21. Okay, so these numbers right here would work great. All right, so those are our solutions. The last thing we have to do is just write the equation with our solutions back in them, okay? So we just need to plug them back into our original equation right here. So we're gonna plug in a one for A and a two for C. So then our final equation right here would be one X squared, or we could just write it as X squared, right? Minus eight X plus C, and C again is two, right? So plus two, is equal to zero, right? So then there's your final equation. All right, here's the next one. So uh, we have ax squared plus 10x is equal to c, and we're told that we have one real solution, right? So we have to set it up so this thing has one real solution. Now, the first thing you wanna do before anything else is just make sure your equation is in standard form, All right? The last problem I did, I didn't mention that because it was already set up properly, but standard form is just this right here. AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero, right? So you can see all the terms are on one side of the equal sign. So here, let's get rid of the C or move the C by subtracting C from both sides. Uh, so then those cancel out. We'll just have a zero on this side, right? So over here, we're left with AX squared plus 10X minus C is equal to zero. Okay, so now that we have our A, our B, and our C set up, now we can use the discriminant, right? So uh, in this case, we want one real solution. So that would be this 
rule right here. So to have one real solution, our discriminant has to be equal to zero. Okay, so we have to set this equation, b squared minus 4ac, equal to zero, right? So b squared minus 4ac equal to zero. Okay, now one thing I wanna point out here is that the terms in your discriminant have to match the terms up here. So what do I mean by that? So as you can see, first of all, here we have a positive a, so we have a positive a. Here we have our b, which we're gonna plug in right there, and then here we have a negative c. So that means this c right here has to be negative also. Okay, so instead of a positive c right there, we need to plug that in as a negative c like that. Okay, that's the only kind of tricky part about setting up our problems. Just make sure that these ter the signs on your terms up here match the signs on your terms over here. Okay, so now let's fill out what we have. So for b, uh, it's positive 10, so we'll plug in a positive 10 right there, and that's squared, minus four times a, uh, we don't know what a is equal to, right? And we don't know what c is equal to, right? So we'll keep that as minus c, and this is all equal to zero. Okay, so then here we get 100 uh, minus 4a times negative c, so that's equal to positive 4ac, right? Plus 4ac is equal to zero. Okay, now to isolate a and c, we can get rid of this 100 by subtracting 100 from both sides, right? Those cancel out. So then here, and I'll just write it over here, we get uh, that 4ac is equal to zero minus 100, which is negative 100, right? Negative 100. And then solving for a and c, we'll divide both sides by four. Boom, those cancel out. So then we get ac is equal to negative 25, sorry, 25. Okay, so now that we're just left with a and c, now we can just pick whatever we want uh, for these two to make sure it equals negative 25. So we can say that a is equal to positive five and c is equal to negative five, right? Those are the two numbers I'm gonna choose there. And the last thing we need to do is just uh, write the original equation, right? So the original equation is this one right here. So ax squared plus 10x is equal to c. So in this case, a again is equal to five, right? So we're gonna say five x squared plus 10 x is equal to c and c is equal to negative five. So we'll plug in a negative five right there, right? So there's your equation right there. All right, last one. So here's negative four x plus c is equal to negative a x squared. So again, the first thing we wanna do is make sure this is in standard form. Okay, so let's add a x squared, add a x squared to both sides, those cancel out. So then here we get uh, a x squared minus four x plus c is equal to zero, right? And that looks like a six kind of zero. Now we're told that we have two imaginary solutions. So we have to set this up so it has two imaginary solutions. So to do that, we're gonna to have to use this rule right here that I already marked. So we're gonna to have to set the discriminant to be less than zero. So the discriminant in this case, and as you can see, uh, A and C are both positive, right? So we can write it as B squared minus four AC. And it has to be less than zero in this case. Okay, so first of all, b is equal to negative four, so we're gonna say negative four squared minus four ac is less than zero. Uh, negative four squared is equal to 16, so we get 16 minus four ac is less than zero. Uh, here we can add, I'll do it in red, add four ac, add four ac to both sides. Those cancel out, so then we're left with 16 is less than 4ac. Okay, and I'm actually gonna move it up here just to have a little bit more room. So to solve for a and c, let's get rid of this four by dividing both sides by four. Uh, 16 divided by four is equal to four, so we get four is less than ac. Okay, so all we're left with is a and c, right? So uh, we need a and c to be bigger than four. So we can set, let's just say a is gonna be equal to two, and c is equal to three, right? Because two times three is equal to six, and six is greater than four. So those are our two numbers, two solutions that we're gonna use here. Now, if we plug these back into our original equation, uh, this is the original equation right here, right? So we're gonna have negative four x plus c, c is three, right? Is equal to negative ax squared. So negative 
uh, a is 2, right? So negative 2x squared, right? So there's your final equation. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.